this is great that uh, I have this opportunity to present this to all of you. And uh, I see a lot of people zooming in. So uh, today, what we're doing here is we're actually summarizing some of the you know exciting exercises from one of my class, the Leadership 520, um, and giving everybody a little bit of insight about you know how do we actually adopt cloud? How do we operate cloud? And think through some of the decisions that you would need to do, uh, that you would need to make as you are actually operating in a cloud environment. And we obviously make it into a simulation, sort of exciting, you know, put you right at the seat of a CISO of an organization and see how you would react to some of these challenging cloud decisions. Um, so that's what we're doing. And let me give you a little bit of an introduction about myself first, right? Um, obviously, I teach for science, right? Um, and you know, in my in my day job, I now you know after after about twenty years of working in the financial you know industry doing security, I now work in the consulting industry. And you know, when I'm not doing my day job, I teach for science and I uh, write different courses such as the web application security defending the web application security area, and also uh, the Leadership 520, as I mentioned earlier, which is the uh, cloud security for leaders. Um, and that's really my background here. And uh, I'm very excited to work with you on, on this particular challenge here. Today, what we're doing is we have three different events that we will be asking you to participate in. Uh, I can assure you that you know while the concept sounds really, really simple, uh, some of the thinking path, the decisions, and what you actually need to understand, you know, should be really challenging and exciting. Um, definitely feel free to use any tooling, you know, even ask me questions. That's totally okay, right? You know, you can use the Zoom chat to you know interact with others if you really want, or Discord, right? Uh, I, by the way, I can't flip flop too much. So I'm going to try to monitor the chat on Zoom as much as I can. Um, and uh, that's um, how we're going to, you know, look into some of these challenges and, you know, we uh, attempt to, you know, find the best solution to the situation at play. Um, so as I said, there are going to be three different events. But before we start, there is going to be a platform. To those of you who have taken the leadership classes in SANS, you should be somewhat familiar with the Cyber 42 um, style games. Um, so Cyber 42, what it is, is that this is a uh, simulation platform. Uh, sometimes, you know, I call it the really glorified uh, multiple choice platform. Using this platform, which is on, by the way, on rangers.io. Those of you who come from a technical background, you know, that, that's really the SANS CTF platform and so on. So through the platform, which we're going to ask you to log into, you know, get into and make sure that you are actually in the right place. Um, and what we're going to do is that we're going to play a simulation game um, of which the game is uh, set up such that we will be, you'll be competing, right, um, against each other on what is known as the security culture score. Security culture score is really the ultimate, you know, metrics that we're going to win, right? Um, and as I said, it's a simulation. So, you know, together with that, just like any other organization, we are always contending with, you know, or chuckling between money, time, resources. That's what uh, this simulation game is any decision that you make have implication on the money, the time as well. Uh, and we have four other factors that we will factor in as well, which are the direct, prevent, detect, respond. You know, if those sound familiar to you as a security practitioner, you're at the right place because, you know, those are, you know, you can think of it like a NIST framework and, you know, those of you who are in the AWS world, AWS also evaluate uh, your cloud maturity based on you know direct prevent detect and respond as well. So those are the metrics that we'll also you know evaluate uh, ourselves based on. Okay, uh, just as you you know, do your regular day job, 
you know, you're always dealing with, you know, as you try to improve security state, which is the security culture, you're always looking at, hey, can I manage my budget? You know, right now, over here, you've got 150K, right? Uh, at the beginning, you've got time unit of 15 unit. And we're starting off with a culture point of 10, okay? Uh, these are, by the way, your starting score, okay? Uh, and I'll talk about, you know, as we go on, talk about what that means and so on, okay? Um, at the end of the game, okay, after the three stages, um, we will, uh, obviously, you know, some of you are going to make choices that are more expensive. Some of you are going to make choices that takes more time. Um, what happens is if you overspend by 10K, then we take one culture point away. If you overspend your time by one point, then we take one culture point away. And, you know, it's not all, you know, punishing and so on. But also, if you earn 20 points, you know, over uh, 100 for each of those strategic capability, those are, you know, in the last line, the direct, the prevent, detect, and respond. Uh, if you earn over 120, then it will accumulate one more culture point back to your uh yeah to your culture point so that basically is how we are going to play the game so there are a lot of different factors uh i know we only have three stages in this you know shorter summarized version of the game but you know it should still be very 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 excited so um that's really how we're going to do that now uh, what you want to do right as we open up the game plan panel and so on We'll get you to log in uh, into the ranges.io. We'll give you the code to log in. Um, I think some of you have already seen it on um, you know, the website itself. But um, you know, ultimately, we need you to get into the platform. Once we open up the event one, what you will be doing is that you will be looking at the challenge yourself and you evaluate the situation. We'll obviously do a little bit of briefing to you you know, what the situation is, but at the same time, analyze all the different possible options. Each of them have different implications on timing, scoring, and so on. So you got to choose the best one. Think through it before you answer, okay? Don't just randomly click on it, or try not to at least. Okay, so with that, I would like to get everybody set up. And what you need to do um, you know, I think the aviator.cloud website already has the set of instructions that, you know, we uh, open up uh, to you. Uh, but if you have, um, if you have uh, just got into, you know, the game here, um, what you want to do is go into ranges.io, okay? And lock in using, I would recommend that you lock in with your SANS credential, okay? Um, and Hayes is actually, you know, sh sharing that link in the Zoom chat. So if you can take a look at the Zoom chat, that would be helpful as well. Uh, this is the website that we're sharing. Okay. Uh, so you can tell that, uh, let me see, chapter eight is over here. Well, I'm clicking on the wrong area. Uh, and basically, this is the uh, website website instruction. Yes, there, there we go. Uh, and here's the code. You can join the event. Here's the code that you would need to click on, uh, that you would need to put in. Once you put in this join code, what you will see is that you will be presented with a screen like this asking you if you want to join the event. And you would then join the event. Okay. And I see a lot of other people already in. So that's a good sign. Um, so yeah, uh, that's the setup instruction. I'm gonna pause for a minute for everyone to you know find your own bearing here before we move on. And to those of you who already joined, good job. <laughs> Thanks for following the instructions. Okay. If you have any questions, you know about how to join, or if you have any challenges, use the Zoom chat to let us know. But otherwise, I'm gonna advance forward here. Okay, um, so the gameplay here, the scenario that we're going to be, you know, using here is going to be you are the newly hired CISO at Sands Insurance, ninety-year-old company, six thousand employees, 
um, you know, 365 million in uh, revenue and data center in three countries, well past capacity limit. So this is a, you know, good occasion to move to the cloud, right? And your business hear about the cloud and they're pretty excited about it. They have a very aggressive mission to support the 400% growth, four times, you know, the growth of the business in 18 months. So that's going to be a tall order for any organization. And they're hoping that, you know, the cloud can help them support that growth. So that's going to be our scenario here. That's going to be the backdrop for your considerations for every single scenario that we're going to be playing around with. Okay. Uh, so that's that. And now, um, then we can zoom into event one. Um, before we get started looking at the, you know, different choices, I want to present to you, you know, a little bit of background here. Why are we doing this is that, you know, we cover, you know, some of these type of material in the class to get everybody in the right frame of mind. So everybody will learn a few things, you know, along the way and, you know, understand, you know, for example, the first one is really about cloud adoption, your cloud adoption strategy. In adopting cloud, there are going to be a lot of different um, you know, considerations. We want to get everyone in the right mindset so that event one actually makes sense. Because in event one, what you're going to be dealing with, the topic of discussion, is going to be about cloud adoption, right? And cloud adoption in any organization is going to be no nothing short of being interesting. But if you think about, you know, in general, organizations want to plot out a roadmap in how they want to adopt the cloud. And these are very general, generic, hey, you know, these are our business requirements. Uh, this is why we want to adopt cloud. These are the things that we want to support. Um, and, you know, people then go and have to build the foundation, right? Roadmap is also important because, you know, that locks down not just so much security, but also what is the business going to do? How are we going to support the business, connect back into the IT world, back within, your entire, you know, IT strategy, and also comes with that security as well. And then you want to build a foundation, right? Like, you know, building the foundation, some, some of that is going to come back with your configurations and, you know, your desire state. No one in their right mind would build the cloud with all the bells and whistles, you know, right at day one. Nobody has a time, right? Usually the business have very, very specific timeline to say, hey, there's three months, six months, 12 months, we need to get everything ready, right? So the MVP, minimum viable product sort of concept is really, really, you know, sort of common in the industry here. The idea is build whatever we need right now. And, you know, so, you know, we're secure enough for the portion that we're going to support, right? Like if you think about your cloud adoption, most organizations will start in the cloud and use about you know five or six different services at a beginning point. You know the whole idea is secure the platform, secure the five or six services, build that foundation, and you build your whole hierarchy of your cloud resources. Make sure your IAM is good, right? Your identity and access management. So those are some of the foundation that we're talking about. Then you're doing the migration and operations. You know day one. Uh, you know, afterwards is also very interesting, right? Like, so those things need a lot of planning ahead of time. And some of the transition that, you know, we talk about in, in the leadership class is like, hey, how do we actually drive the transformation to IAC, which is infrastructure as code? How do we do that, right? And those are some of the, you know, interesting topics that we also, you know, discuss in the, in the class. But those are the, in the planning phase, you have to figure out the strategy. And later on, you also, you know, get into the continuous optimization and so on, you know, within your organization. But the first step of, you know, getting into the cloud, you know, obviously there is going to be a lot of consensus within the organization that need to be built. Um, you know, leadership have to agree and, you know, getting their respective team to actually get going on, you know, getting some of these, you know, idea into solid foundation for everyone to operate. And it's not just necessarily in the security world, but every part of the organization. So together with that, um, you know, that 
I think that plays you in the right mindset for us to get into our first um, uh, event here. Now, if you have any questions, you know, again, uh, you know, I can take some of the questions in Zoom uh, chat. Um, I think I see people raising hands and stuff like that, but yeah, I can certainly do that. Um, you know, if you're going to ask questions, definitely, you know, use the Zoom chat. Um, okay. And uh, let's get into our first action here, okay? So earlier, you know, we have joined um, the challenge within rangers.io, okay? And now let me, you know, in the background, let me get everything ready on my side there. There we go. So uh, now we have just started the game. And as I mentioned, there are going to be three different challenges here. What we are going to look at is event one, okay? So that one has been released and we're ready to roll here. Uh, one thing that you should keep in mind is that this one will offer up to free culture point, but then there are other metrics that they will award back to you. The scenario here, as you can you know, read through yourself, Right, it's going to be your CIO. Right, remember you are the Sans Insurance uh, CISO, and your CIO, the CIO who is your boss, you know, just came back from a management meeting where he was pressured by the CEO to accelerate the pace of the cloud adoption. So that the Unicorn Project, some of you may identify that reference, you know, <laughs> from some of the folks, right? Um, you know, some some of the DevSecOps folks. But uh, you know, this is the most crucial business initiative that can be uh, deployed to the cloud environment. It's, this is the only way that it can meet the planned timeline. Remember, your data center is up at capacity. There's no way for you to deploy additional you know, resources over there. So you're actually trying to uh, you know, get advanced forward by moving over to the cloud. But the timeline given to get the environment ready is two months. Right, two months is very very difficult, um, you know, for any organization to meet that timeline. And then you know, it's challenging for an organization that is new to cloud adoption. The security work has not started yet. You know, I've heard of stories of many organizations that actually run into the same thing. Right, some organizations even find, you know, that some of their colleagues have put data into the cloud. Right, like you know, shadow IT. And you know similar sort of situations here, right? You know, but the good thing here in this situation is that you still have two months. So the question is, like, you know, what do you what do you want to do? There is a management meeting attended by senior leaders, you know, day after tomorrow to discuss this matter. So your choice over here is you want to figure out which way you want to go. There are going to be four choices, right? Each of them will cost different, you know, time and money. Uh, what what I ask you to do is read through this so that you can actually get through, you know, understand the situation and figure out the different options to see which one is the best option. I can tell you each of them have different implication. You know, once you select it, it will tell you, okay, A means whatever, right? So that's, you know, there will be a scoring implication. Um, we're going to give people time to work on this. Uh, I would say that, you know, I'm going to set a timer for five minutes for people to work on this. Um, let me put, put the timer here up front. Okay. And uh, yeah, now is the time for you to work on it. And then after five minutes, I will come and debrief um, based on each of the outcome. Like I'm sure you selected one answer. I'm sure you want to see what the other answers scoring implications are. So we would discuss that in a few minutes. So now is the time. And you know, if any of you have challenge, challenges going into rangers.io, uh, let us know over the webinar chat. And I think Ben also put a link you know, to the instruction on joining rangers.io um, earlier, which is, I believe, over here as well.
Okay, we've still got a few seconds left, but I see that most people have already selected the answer, so we should just get going here. Um, let me pivot over to pop our interface here. So right now, what we're doing is that we will be doing a debrief, okay? Um, so earlier, I think, you know, as we mentioned, um, there are going to be A, B, C, and D answers, but each of them will have different scoring invocation. Uh, so, yeah, I should have stopped the timer. Um, so, okay, um, now what we have, okay, if you have selected A, let's take a look at it. These are the scoring implication with, you know, considering the cost associated with each of the answer. So at the end, this is how much money you got or you'd get deducted, okay? If it's say 10 grand, then it's giving you 10 grand. And if it is time minus two, then it's deducting two points out of that. Again, this aggregates uh, with the, you know, cost of answering that question as well. Uh, so, you know, if you have selected A, then this one, you know, the management does not appreciate your suggestion that you're putting the company at risk, right? They want a solution to meet the timeline, not to defer, right? This one is, you know, going to reward you with money, right? Time actually minus two, because you got to work, you know, towards that, um, you know, to, um, you know, so we build a trust with your management team. Uh, culture overall is two. Why? Because, you know, you're, peers are respecting you, right? Like the, you're like, you're saying that, hey, you know, we want to take more time to do it. Um, direct and prevent goes up by 25 points, okay? So that's the scoring implication. B, if you have selected B, right? Uh, if B is your answer, the management team appreciate that you're trying to meet the timeline without taking on more risk for the company. Since there is a running project with a consulting firm, this is the expensive option, but then, <clears throat> The you know company actually reward you with some of the uh, you know budget as well. Uh, they, you know your boss is actually really nice. You know they are saying that they're gonna cover it because they like the idea. So this end up not being so expensive. Uh, culture is my, uh, free. Uh, direct you know prevent detect respond all go up by twenty five points. Again you know we start off with. Uh, 20 and then it goes up once it goes above 120 then you know you get one more culture point okay so c if c is your answer then you know the management team respect your you know respects you for trying to meet the timeline um you know this is the you know defer drop everything and work on this right there are other implications to other work as well right so this one you know the culture did not fare so well uh, time minus two and direct and prevent still goes up by 25 points. So that's that. And then if you have chosen D, okay, D actually is the most optimal answer, right? Like the meeting went well, the team can identify the key tasks in the roadmap. This is the collaboration task or the collaboration option, okay? Um, and you start and work on it immediately. So this is the scoring implication. You can just see that is pretty positive. So that's really, you know, what it looks like on this particular challenge. This is only challenge number one, right? Like the event number one. And as you can tell, right, just getting everybody into the right position to answer these questions, thinking critically about what the situation is and what are the most optimal answer. Now, let us then, you know, now that we've complete action uh, event one, let's get into event two, okay? So event two, I want to get you in the right frame of mind. This is really about well-architected framework, okay? So as you try to adopt your cloud, even at the initial phase, there is these things called the landing zone, you know, sort of pattern. Um, and the well-architected framework by each of your cloud service providers, and you may say, hey, I use Alibaba, I use, you know, Oracle Cloud, every single cloud providers out there have their own well-architected framework. Needless to say, right? Some of these things were started by your AWS. AWS really is a pioneer for the cloud environment. Not saying that they are now the best, but saying that they pioneered some of these practices, some of the you know, cloud computing, you know, they were the innovator. And one thing that they innovate well is in this, you know, giving the guidance to the customers. And the well architected framework is uh, the sort of the North Star. Um, 
you know, guiding principle for the customers to say, hey, this is the best practice in many different areas. As you can see on this slide, right, like there are multiple different areas of recommendation, many of them outside of security. But you can also see that, you know, across the industry, you know, in the cloud industry, every single cloud service provider has security component in the web architecture framework. And I also want to point that out to you that they all look very similar, right? Uh, one of the specific thing, and then by the way, this makes our job very easy, right? We go back into you know, our respective cloud service provider that we're using. And even if you're in multi-cloud, you can just blend all the well architected framework recommendation together and use it as your you know, guiding principle. And what you want to understand is that when inside well architected framework in the security area, there are going to be data protection recommendation. One aspect of it is that you know you want to encrypt data at rest in transit and in use while the data is being used, right? Those are some of the features and capabilities that your cloud service provider are now offering. Um, and you want to use the managed encryption service. Why? Because you know if you think about it, now we're at the right at the beginning year of you know, transitioning over to post-quantum encryption. And, you know, if you think about how we want to do it and so on, if, we, if you're already using some of these managed encryption services, your life is going to be a lot easier, right? Because those connections, those data encryption are automatically, you know, at some point going to transition over to post-quantum. That makes things a lot easier. And, you know, we, we also want to classify the sensitive data in your environment and also apply controls and protection to the sensitive data. So those are some of the recommendations across the board, regardless of which cloud service provider you're actually signing up with. So that gives you the right frame of mind to answer the next challenge here, our next event. Let me start off the next event here and... Uh, Jason, would you want to answer the question that's in the Q&A before jumping into the next one? Oh, sure. Is there one? Uh, let me see. Uh, is there a Q&A? Sorry, I don't see that. Uh, yes. Okay, I'll read it then. Uh, how often have you experienced a top-down approach, like in the first question, and how often do you feel like you're driving from the bottom up? Ah, uh, I appreciate the question. So... Sorry, am I not reading the chat? I only see, hmm, I don't see that question. Oh, huh, interesting. Uh, so, what, what, sorry, can you repeat the question? I heard bottom up and, you know, how often do you see top down or bottom up? Is that uh, yeah, how, how often do you see it from top down rather than bottom up? Uh, and then I'm asking because in my experience, it feels like I spend a lot of time and effort saving executives from themselves. Great question. Okay, so there are, there are a lot of you know resources that I can provide on that and and, and sharing uh, information on that. So I will answer that you know in the most simplistic manner. And I think you guys all know how to reach me. I'm jlam at sans.org. <laughs> you can hang me there. But uh, great question. So this is a very very common thing that a lot of organizations experience. A lot of people in the organization experience. You know uh, you know you see certain things that are like hey. You know, I would, would like to drive it that way, but then, you know, how do we get all the other stakeholders to be on the same page? Um, and is it going to be, you know, do we just go top and down or do we just influence all of the, you know, working level, you know, stakeholders and then, you know, drive it up? There are a couple of things here that we want to consider. Earlier, we talked about a roadmap. How would organizations draft a roadmap? A lot of times, you know, you want to go back to well architecture framework or another framework called cloud adoption framework. So, you know, these things, you know, again, if you're asking, hey, do I have it in GCP, right? I don't care which cloud you're in. These frameworks are all available everywhere. So if you actually follow that framework, right, from your cloud service provider, Security is either one out of four or one out of six priorities that we need to drive. And those, you know, usually position security very, very well 
in the organization because you're just at that point, you're not really inventing the wheel. At that point, you're following what the industry, you know, flow of thought is going to be. And that helps to drive that point across much better. But at a certain point, you know, your organization would need to establish, you know, certain level of, you know, we call it the cloud governance committee and so on. That's not necessarily a, you know, security committee, but get everybody into the consensus, right? Many organizations have like IT steering committee and so on. You can repurpose some of those committee for to discuss the cloud decisions. But at the end of the day, you know, we believe that, you know, between your organization's, you know, business line, security, you know, other functions, and also the IT, there needs to be consensus about, you know, where things are. Because, you know, at the end of the day, people are going to tolerate risk, right? If you're not doing certain things, then risk is going to accumulate. And, uh, you know, so that that's really some of the perspective here. And I'm going to, you know, sort of, I can go on and on for that, but, you know, I'm going to end it here. If, you, if there are additional, you know, follow-up, let me know. Uh, ben, thanks for referring that question back to me. Are there any other questions that I can take? Okay. So it's all clear from here. Good. Okay, cool. Um, I'll check in again on that later on. And by the way, you know, and thanks for the question earlier. I think Ace was putting the evaluation. Uh, we would love to hear your feedback, right? Like, you know, hey, whether this game is useful, some of the information that we provided are useful. Uh, so yeah, definitely click on that link and give us some feedback. That would be much appreciated. Uh, okay, so with that, um, let me also kick off the uh, second challenge here. Okay. Uh, let me go. I'll answer A. Okay. And then we can get into uh, the second challenge. The second challenge is really related to well architected framework, uh, specifically on the data protection aspect. Okay. We obviously understand that data need to be protected, but you know, in cloud, how do you actually protect the data? You need to find out where the data is first uh, so that you, you can go and protect it. And you know, we refer, you know, specifically on this, we refer to, you know, if you want to read up on it, there are good recommendations from AWS on these practices. If you say, if you tell me that, oh, I use a different cloud, this doesn't apply to me, just wait, right? Because you know, whatever cloud you're in, you know, you can read each other's cloud's general recommendation and do really, really, really well on. Because if you look across the well architecture framework and even cloud adoption framework, they're all applicable across different cloud environments. The only thing that is not is all the implementation detail, the Terraform template that they give you, and some of the technical implementation can be the technical options can be a little different. But you know the practices, what do you need to do, and so on, are generally common across the board. So at a leadership level, these things, you know, are sort of uh, you know common common uh, framework across the industry. So looking at it, there are two recommendations, for example, from AWS that are saying you know you would want to classify your data, and you would want to apply controls to your data. Right, so you want to classify, tag your data, right? Like, hey, this particular S3 bucket or blob storage has very sensitive data in it, or you know, per PII in it, or credit card data in it. You want to tag it, and you know, according to your policy, you want to apply data protection to it. That's what this is about, right? These best practices recommended using you know cloud-based automated tools. You know, if you have ever tried to do it on your own data center, you may be very unsuccessful because it's very, very, very difficult to scan across all the data across your data center. But then if you're in cloud, because it's usually one or two or three different providers doing it, right? It's much easier to do it automatically. And, you know, the recommendation is do it automatically and apply the data control based on sensitivity of the data. Uh, while your organization recognizes it, you know, currently your organization is doing it manually, right? That's the starting point for a lot of organization. And, you know, during project initiation, like, you know, as you start your, 
you know, in, in analytics project or whatever project, data classification is determined through consultation with the data owner um, and apply, then controls are applied on ad hoc basis, right, per project basis. The team is concerned right now because they're like, hey, we've never had experience and, you know, how do we do this? Um, so these are the options. I would ask that you review it. I've given you quite a bit of insight over here. So I'm going to give, you know, people, I would say about three minutes to read through this one. And, uh, you know, you choose the right answer and then we'll come back to do a debrief. Okay. Okay. Um, I trust that everyone has uh, gone through this one. And uh, let me walk through all the different implications here. Okay, so if you have chosen A, okay, then the audit lead has expressed you know, concerns, well, your, one of your peer in the audit area, right, has expressed concern about deferring this initiative. Um, so in this one, there's not a whole lot of implication, right? Like no, not, not a whole lot of up and down. <laughs> but at the end of the day, right, um, you know, the uh, the time is like minus one and so on. So, you know, um, so this one is not the most optimal answer. Uh, but then uh, the next one, B, is way more optimal, right? Uh, so this one actually award you culture point of three. Uh, the rec is uh, 50, uh, you know, other than prevent, you get 50 points. So that, you know, gets you much higher into the stack for some of these uh, security uh, capabilities. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the other, sorry, sorry, the implication of that is that, you know, you are actually doing a scan and trying to see, you know, where the data are, um, taking a little bit of a leap of faith on that one. Um, then, you know, this one is actually doing a pilot project, um, you know, and, you know, why the culture point is two, right? Like the pilot project, um, helps but then you know this is with the you know um you know you're actually looking at your environment and actually formulating you know the uh plan to actually extend to the uh additional environment so the rec is 25 okay on that so this one is also a decent answer right not the most optimal but decent uh d okay so you're doing a market assessment right to see what other third party tools and so on the third party to most of the cloud service provider have a very, very good, you know, inside the cloud capability. You can certainly do additional uh, market scans and so on to actually understand what other vendors are out there. But at the end of the day, this is not necessarily a tooling problem, right? It's more of a, you know, a political problem, B, right? Like a strategy problem. So we want to make sure that there is a way forward um, you know, regardless of which tool you choose, there are going to be certain detection and you have to come up with workflow and methodology to, you know, trim those down and figure out how to protect the data. So that's what it comes down to. Uh, so this one, a little bit of money hit, but then, you know, culture is one, high minus one. Uh, there is a little bit of bonus on the rec side. So that's where, you know, this, the implications are. Hopefully you have chosen the Good answer. I haven't looked at the scoring yet, but hey, you know, that sounds, you know, some of you are very, very good at selecting the best answer. So getting back into the next one. Okay, let's take a look at the third one, our last one over here. Our event free. And let me see if there are any questions. Don't see any question. Okay, so event free. Um, this is really about zero trust. Why do we actually talk about zero trust is because, you know, as you project forward into your cloud setup, uh, your organization, uh, you know, 100% uh, going to go into the discussion of, hey, what about firewall, right? But, you know, what's interesting about cloud environment is that firewall doesn't actually work that well, right? Particularly, you know, this is not to say, okay, you don't need firewall. It's a different, it's a different statement. If you're doing, you know, a lot of infrastructure, you know, as a service inside your cloud environment, so you're lifting and shifting server over to the cloud, what you're likely going to see is that you will need firewall. You will absolutely need it. You will need to do it. And um, so, you know, that there's no question about that. That's not any different than your traditional network setup and so on. But then if you get into some of the more exciting portion of your cloud, which is, 
your platform as a service, you know, your managed, you know, database, your managed, you know, services, and so on. Some of those are not necessarily, you know, you can't really do a firewall on it, right? Like, you know, the right solution isn't a firewall. It's really by configuration, is really by, you know, IAM, it is really by authenticating the user better, right? This is the premise of zero trust. Premise of zero trust is not trusting, okay, if it is, you know, JSON coming in from your internal network, then you trust it. Well, you know, in with the cloud environment, with cloud resources, they're always on the internet, always, right? So that's a very, very big paradigm shift from your traditional trust model. And then organization then is going to be, you know, shifting over to using different mechanism to, you know, provision for that, you know, access. You know, if you think about 10, 20 years ago, we were like, okay, let's figure out how to do firewall, right? Let's figure out all the IP address. That was the focal point. I certainly have been in sense for well over 20 years at this point. I remember talking about firewall, like this is like early 2000s, right? Like talking about firewall, how important it is and so on. Now the paradigm is shifting so that we're no longer just talking about firewall, but your decision to let people in is going to be based on your identity, based on what devices they are potentially using. Like for example, you would say, hey, if you're using a corporate managed device, hey, you know, it's not just an identity, it's not just a password, but you also have the device itself. I trust you more, right? And you know, that takes into consideration what sort of application are you using to access the data or what sort of application are you accessing and what data type you're accessing. Earlier, we talked about data protection. You scan your data, you identify where your data are. You also want to understand what data users are actually accessing. For example, if it's JSON in the middle of the night, not using a corporate device, accessing the PII data, no way, forget about it, right? So you, you can make much more comprehensive decision based on more factors. Infrastructure and network are just part of that. And also worthwhile to say that, um, you know, it's not just a yay or nay, right? Like it, then it becomes much more sophisticated. You can say, well, if you are, you know, coming in from this particular, you know, area of the network and so on, I also want you to actually do MFA, right? Multi-factor authentication before I actually give you access to that data. So you can do all that stuff with zero trust, okay? So that's really the premise there. With that, that position you well for this particular challenge over here. Let me go back and you know launch the next one here. Oops. Let me do a quick briefing on it. So at your cloud governance committee meeting, right? Like, you know, where your business, your IT, security, all join together to discuss you know, how you want to run your cloud environment, right? Um, and you know, there are there was an engaging conversation about zero trust. So your organization generally understand you know, that zero trust needs to be done, right? Uh, but then you know, there are, you know, everybody go and ping their respective experts. And there are going to be multiple um, priorities that get emerged. You know, you will see that in most organization, when you mention the word zero trust, people mention vendors. People mention to say, okay, I want this vendor. Or people say, okay, this is zero trust, right? Like you buy something or you go and implement this, you know, more advanced firewall, then that's zero trust. So that's what we're here to debate about, right? There are going to be different answers over here. Um, and, you know, the question is, you know, that your CIO, your boss asks you is, Hey, what is, you know, which way do you want to go? Again, we'll set up for uh, three minutes here, okay? Uh, so that you can actually choose the best answer here, okay? Okay, um, welcome back to this. And uh, let's do the debrief on it just as, you know, we have done before. Uh, so on this one, if you have chosen A, right? I am, right? If you have you know, looking at the identity and access management, that's not a bad idea, right? Like, hey, you want to address certain technical areas first. And I would definitely say, if you want to do zero trust, you know, you're definitely going to look into uh, your IAM for sure, right? Why? 
because if you you know if you want to authenticate stronger and you don't have the foundation right about who should be in your environment then you have no basis to do anything right like you know then we talk about iam you know even the most fundamental uh aspects of hey are users actually grounded by your hr record if you're not start there right there's no like fancy technical things that can you know overcome some of those very very fundamental deficiency i think what that's where we want to start off with and uh so you know the the, the culture um you know gives you one point direct 25 prevent 25 but then you know one thing about it is even though you want to address some of these technical deficiency uh, you also need to figure out okay so after you fix i am what do you do right so that that's really you know sort of the aspects there and if you take a look at the next one, right, uh, you're going to buy, you know, into a category, the CDPP, right? Um, so taking a look at, you know, the vendors to see if, you know, you can just buy zero trust, right? Like, you know, I've got a friend who <laughs> did some webcast saying that zero trust is not a skill, right? SKU, right? Like you can't just buy zero trust. It's a principle, it's something that you implement across the board, across your resources. And, you know, it, you know, while right now there are like zero trust network access, those particular vendors are definitely selling a component of the zero trust, which is, you know, when you are in remote uh, environment and so on, how do you, how do they actually bridge you back into your environment without consuming too much bandwidth and being very efficient and, you know, in a user very, you know, happy manner, right? So those are, you know, what these particular vendors actually address, but they don't necessarily address your entire environment's, you know, zero trust challenges. So that's that. And, and you know, I know the wording are kind of confusing because, you know, some of our, you know, industry analysts believe that, hey, let's call this zero trust, let's call that those zero trusts. There is a lot of marketing, you know, going on there. So this one does give you a direct of 25 points uh, in addition. Uh, and then uh, the next one is going to be, you know, the most optimal answer, like, you know, figuring out what the roadmap, what the strategies are before you actually move ahead with it, right? Even though it sounds like, you know, hey, you're stopping, stalling, you do need some sort of direction because if you don't analyze your environment to see where you are your strong suit right now in your organization so that you can put those factor in use, right? Like, for example, if you do device management really well, you can very quickly put those data back at work to strongly authenticate users' identity and so on. So, you know, getting the understanding about what use cases, what are the quick wins are going to help you a lot in the zero trust journey. So that's basically that, okay? Um, so this one is pretty positive. And then D, if you have chosen D, okay? That one is going to be the more advanced firewall that you're going to buy, right? Like, again, don't buy zero trust, right? Implement it. So this one, you know, while we are what you culture point of one, direct 25, you know, is not as optimal as C. Okay. So that's basically that one. And I also released, you know, the last stage of the scoring adjustments as well. So after you answer free, you can also answer the last stage, which will actually adjust the scoring. And you can actually take a scoreboard, uh, take a look at the scoreboard to see actually which one of of all of you actually score the best. And that's, you know, a very, very short and sweet, you know, sort of uh, exercise that we've done here, you know, challenging you to think through, you know, some of the scenario that could happen in your own organization to see, you know, how you would fare in making those decisions. Again, you know, we, we gave you very, very, in a confinement of time, very high level summary of what these challenges would look like. Um, I have to say, right, like in the class, right, like some of these are extracted out of the class that uh, we talk about the course, the Leadership 520. In that course, we also blend in some of the hands-on component. We show you some of the cloud environment and we ask you, you know, how can you understand what the technical challenges really are like, you know, in inside your environment? what would your decisions be? And sometimes things get very, very, very complicated in cloud, right? You know, you are blending some of your traditional data security, 
uh, network security component into the mix with some of the you know API access, you know some of the you know with OAuth being the protocol you know that are driving some of these access management principle. So you know there are a lot of key decisions that need to be made that you know traditionally you don't have to, and that changes the dynamic significantly. Now, um, just to wrap up, right? Uh, I think what we're saying is that um, you know the Knowledge is really the power of making some of those cloud adoption and operations decisions. And, you know, I'm sure everybody can get a glimpse of that, you know, earlier in this particular challenges, you know, the three challenges that we have actually looked at. Um, I suggest all of you to take a look at the LDR 520, the cloud security for leaders. Um, you know, we've got really good stuff there. And, you know, we have even put uh, forth some of the, you know, information from that course. There is a maturity model that we teach inside that course that would benefit any organization. So definitely take a look at that. Um, you know, I'm sure you can find, you know, the cloud security maturity model. I can share a link in a second uh, as well on the chat. But those are some of the information that I would suggest that you check out. And I'm happy to take, you know, with Stuart, I think a little bit of time, happy to take any questions that anybody may have uh, using the Q&A. And yeah, there is, you know, just a reminder there's that there was a evaluation link that was pushed out, you know, inside the uh, the chat. Um, yeah, we would love to hear your feedback. With that, I think that's all I got here. And again, you know where to reach me. You know, my my contact were pushed out inside the the, the chat function. So reach out to me if you want to uh, uh, discuss anything. <laughs>